Before we talk about the history, let's all first know what is media. Media, which came from the Latin word medium, is the means of communication such as radio, television, newspapers, and magazines that reach or influence people widely. It has been an existing part of our lives for a long time up until now. The media development in the Philippines was heavily influenced by the colonial history of the nation and the political movements that happened several years ago. Starting on the pre-colonial era, in the early times of humankind, our ancestors developed a system of communication and information dissemination. When there is a system of oral communication, it follows that a system of written communication also existed. The most notable discovery of a language system in the country is the ancient alphabet called by Bayin, which is similar to image-based types of character in other Asian countries. Asian Filipinos also used materials existing in their environment to write down and record their experiences. Oral systems of handing down information, literary pieces such as folk tales and epics, as well as family histories, were also predominant in various areas of the country. The closest to having a broadcast system of a information dissemination in the ancient time could be traced to the existence of Umalokohan or the town crier. The town crier's major role was to go around the barangay and announce important information that concerns the citizens. The print industry came in the picture when books, magazines, and newspapers were brought to the country by the ancient colonizers, mostly printed in a language that not everybody could speak. This resulted to a social class divide. This divide created a highly literate ruling class that held the power over the unschooled and uneducated lower class during the Spanish colonial period. The rulers of the time also would help the public from accessing the early forms of media. Even the very first newspaper in the country, the Superior Gobierno, which was established in 1811, was written in Spanish and was intended only for the Spaniards. Early Filipino revolutionaries recognized this literary divide and educated themselves by learning how to read and write in their language and in the foreign one as well. This was followed by the making of local newspapers as Filipinos started to free themselves from the colonial masters. La Solidaridad was the most popular of the nationalistic newspapers, published in 1899. We all know that our national hero, Jose Rizal, also wrote his two well-known novels that criticized the Spanish rule. No le Tangere and El Filibusterismo. This proves that the pen could be mightier than the sword. It was during the American period when some of the long-running newspapers we have in the country were established. The Manila Times that established at 1898 and the Manila Bulletin that established in 1900. Since the Americans taught us English, it was not that hard for Filipinos to keep well informed of the media's content. However, all that changed when the Japanese occupation happened. With media censorship in action, selected newspapers were allowed to run under tight content control. Underground media was operated that time until the country was liberated from Japanese control. The Philippines then enjoyed a healthy and free press practice with the media keeping a close eye on the activities of the government and reporting any wrongdoings. Therefore, the public was always aware of what is happening. However, all that changed upon the position of martial law in 1972. Then, President Ferdinand Marcos' first moves were to suppress press freedom, forcing journalists into underground 
and even jailing some of them. Some newspapers were allowed to reopen, but their slant was always pro-dictatorship and pro-government. Journalists then established alternative press publications during the 1980s to inform the people of what really went on during Marcos' regime. Some of these brave journalists included Felix Bautista and Melinda Q. de Jesus of Veritas, Eugenia Apostol and Leti Magsano of Philippine Daily Inquirer, and Joaquin Rosses of the Manila Times. The Marcos regime aftermath led to the 1987 Philippine Constitution stating that media should be protected and should remain free. A section in the Bill of Rights guarantees the freedom of press as well as the freedom of expression of all Filipinos up to today. When it comes to popular culture, magazine also came into the picture when the Spanish and American colonizers brought samples here in the country. Later on, it was locally adopted and the most notable magazine empire in the early 1900s was established with the publication of Liwayway Magazine, a Filipino language magazine composed of serialized novels and short stories, essays, news items, photos, lifestyle, and entertainment feature, as well as a comic strip section. Liwayway is still alive and under the publication of Manila Bulletin. In the fashion and lifestyle domain, Cosmopolitan was one of the first of such titles to be adopted in the country. In early 2018, its publisher, Summit Media, decided to eliminate the print version of this magazine one by one to fully transition into a digital online existence. From the comic section of Liwayway Magazine, notable comics pioneers paved their way for a colorful tradition and history of the Filipino comics industry. Even as I result double into drawing cartoons and making stories with comics format, prompting historians to identify him as the first published cartoonist of the Philippines. Soon after, comics become widespread in Filipino society. Two of the most talented visual artists and storytellers made a name for themselves in this field, namely Mars Ravello, whose creation including Darna, Jezebel, Captain Barbell, and many more. Another one is Francisco Kaki, a national artist of the visual arts and is considered one of the most leading personalities of Philippine comics. Two years after successfully launching cinema, the Lumiere Brothers Cinematograph Film, Camera, and Projector Inventions made its way to the Philippines through the efforts of a Spanish soldier named Carlo Nakera. He brought several Spanish language short films and showed them to selected audiences. Thus, began the Filipino love for this art form. During the American period, short films from America were soon imported and shown in the early theaters in Manila during the early 1900s. The very first Filipino produced film, Jose Nepomuceno's The Lagong Bukid in 1919, was actually a movie adaptation of a popular musical stage play created by Hermogenes Ilagan, starring the popular singer stage actress who originated the role, Atang de la Rama. The film designated Nepomuceno as the father of the Philippine cinema because of such early artistic evidence. The Philippines is hailed as having developed one of the earliest film industries in the Asian region. During the Spanish period, Filipinos who did not understood the language of the movie did not find it a hindrance to appreciate the imagery and the music that accompanied the screening. That is what makes a film universal and powerful medium of information and communication dissemination. And since the Americans mandated Filipinos to learn the American language during their time, it was no wonder that Filipinos embraced Hollywood film products that easily during those times. Film's primary purpose in the Philippines was to entertain the people, but this changed when the Japanese colonial period began. Seeing film as an active form of mass media communication, 
the Japanese led the production of propaganda films and tapped Filipino directors and actors to make them. The most popular of such films was Dawn of Freedom in 1944, which highlighted the World War II, aim of the Japanese to have an Asia for the Asians. From the rubble of destruction, the golden age of the Philippine cinema emerged. In 1942, film pioneer Manuel Conde was the first to bring an Asian film to the prestigious international film festivals in Venice, Italy and Cannes, France with his film Kengis Khan. But as with the print industry, things changed during the Marcos regime. Film was one of the most heavily censored media during those times, with filmmakers even changing the titles of their films if President Marcos found them offensive. Yet this era also produced a batch of the most artistic and thought-provoking films that somehow dared to show the real state of the Philippines. Our national artists for film during this era included Lino Brock and Ishmael Bernal. After the 1986 Answer Revolution, the Philippine film industry became freer again, and the early independent studio producers blossomed into the leaders of film production today. The most notable of this batch is Lili Monteverde's Regal Films, followed by another family run business, Viva Films. During the 1990s, ABS CBN started their own film production company, Star Cinema, who gave us many of the most iconic films from the past few decades. Sana ako pa rin. Ako na lang. Ako na lang ulit. Ingit na ingit ako sa iyo, Bobby! Pero bakit parang galit ka? Pero bakit kasalanan ko? Parang kasalanan ko. I deserved an explanation. I deserved an acceptable reason! GMA 7 followed by the making of GMA films in the early 2000s. Today, most of the mainstream films being produced locally come from these studios. Philippine media has started from a very long time ago and is continually striving to give the Filipino people not only the entertainment but also the proper information that we need to know as citizens of the country. We should use this platform for the production of the content that will be beneficial for the many and not to cause chaos and the spreading of false information. Be media literate and let's help Philippine media to continually shine brighter for the future audiences.